Hi, everybody. Welcome to our new Q&A with Jay. Thank you so much for watching, and thank you so much for all of the feedback that you've been giving about our Q&As. We're really excited to keep doing them, and I know Jay is too, right? Very much so. <laughs> well, let's get right into it. We're talking about a lot today. Uh, first, we're going to talk about the Texas Advanced Commitment. That's a huge commitment that the university has made um, to the entire student body and people coming into the university. But talk to me about the McCombs Commitment. Sure. No, it's a, it's a great win for the university. Yes. And one way to think about it is what's happened is there's been a movement on the balance sheet from kind of the system level over to the campus uh, to create a $160 million endowment. And the income off that endowment will be used to fill in gaps of remaining tuition need mm -hmm. uh, for, for families and students with comparatively lower incomes. So uh, as the president's talked about it, families now with incomes of $65,000 or less uh, will have all their tuition met uh, by one source or another. That's so fantastic. And then families from 65 to $125,000 will have some support for all four years mm -hmm. uh, from this. So, yeah, it's a great win. And, uh, you know, big shout out to the Regents for, for doing this and uh, Chairman Eltife, who's a McCombs grad, mm -hmm. uh, helped get this through. And then one of our people, Ray Nixon, had a real hand in, in working uh, through the system and making this happen. And it's a great win for the President, for the Regents, for all of us. Yeah. And what, you know, I have an older son. Uh, he's 17. He's a senior, a high school senior. So he's coming in. So I was really excited about this news. I'm hoping he chooses UT. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll wait and see. But that's, that's such a great commitment and a great win for so many families. It is. Yeah. It is. And, and all the narrative around how much, how much more expensive higher education is getting. Yes. It's great to have this sort of a resource base. Uh, for those for those families with need. Yeah, that's awesome. All right, let's talk about Texas Challenge. Tell me what that is and what we're doing. Yeah, it's related. So uh, the Texas Challenge is taking part of that $160 million, $50 million so far, and pulling it aside as a matching fund. And so if a donor supporter would like to create a scholarship fund, uh, for example, for the McComb School or another unit on campus, uh, they can put in a dollar and then one of those, that dollar is matched by part of that $50 million. Uh, so that, imagine that 50 turns into now 100, and so the $160 million endowment can turn to 210 uh, with that support. Yeah. And I'm really happy that uh, we've gotten two gifts so far at the McComb School for this. Uh, Ray Nixon, who I mentioned earlier, he did the first, um, and then we got another great gift. So we're well on our way to creating more resources for McComb School students in particular yeah. to take advantage of this. How do you think that helps prepare the next generation of, of kids going into the world? How does that help them? Yeah, I think it's lots of ways. Uh, there's everything from their ability to focus on their studies mm -hmm. because they're less concerned about how is their family going to make do. Um, we hope it'll have students who will have less of a need for part-time jobs or things that may pull them away for their studies. Ideally, they may be able to live closer to campus. Uh, there's evidence that students who are closer, more proximate to campus are more likely to finish. Yeah. Um, there should be less debt when they finish. Yes. They should be more free to follow their dreams and passions and a little less worried about taking a first job that may pay a couple thousand dollars more but may not be in their best long-term interest. Right, and it might encourage kids to actually choose to go to college instead of going straight to the workforce, because so many That's are right. saying it's too expensive and then you come out with so much debt that it takes so long to remedy that debt. So this may be a, a way to encourage them to actually go to school. That's right, get, yeah. get more, more top talent here yes. that may have thought this is not attainable. Right. But now, and it's also really good with the publicity around this change that that publicity, we hope, will generate interest and enthusiasm to help students realize that the University of Texas at Austin is possible for yeah, them. Yeah, that's awesome. Let's talk about the Council for Texas Impact. That's something else that we're doing um, that involves faculty members as well as staff. So talk about that a little bit. Yeah, that's right. This is part of the uh, President's State of the University Address uh, this week, and uh, or last week. Uh, mm -hmm. But the President came out and talked about trying to create a group that would help the university think through where things might be 10, 15, 20 years from now. And you can imagine saying that today, if we look back, uh, you know, 15 years ago, there were probably seeds of things on campus at that point in time that if we had capitalized on and invested, maybe we would, would have been even stronger in those areas. Mm -hmm. So much in the same way, the president wants to have a conversation where we would think about as a university, what are the big trends that, that 15, 20 years from now will think, gosh, it was great the university invested more in those things yes. uh, today. Uh, so there's a, a committee that he's put together, and it's got staff representation and also faculty. And Sheridan Tipman and Kishore Gawande of our faculty are, are on that. And um, I know there's going to be chances for 
faculty and staff to engage with that group mm -hmm. and just share ideas about their own, you know, our, our own thoughts about where we think the world might be going. Yeah, it's so important to think about the future, and that's one of our things, being f focused on the future right. and thinking ahead as far as we possibly can. That leads us to start talking about um, how McCombs is being innovative and thinking about where the trends are going and how we can continue to reach students and how we can expand our reach and that is that that um, that incorporates um, technology as well. So we're doing some online classes, but we're also thinking beyond that too. So let's talk about just where we are and where we're trying to where we're trying to be. <laughs> sure, sure. No, I think you can imagine this at everything from kind of a small level to a medium to a big level mm -hmm. and. Um, at somewhat the small level, uh, we've been working with Prabhadev Kanana, who's our Associate Dean for Instructional Innovation. Mm -hmm. And we've set aside some resources for Prabhadev to deploy to help faculty with kind of small grants to let them try some technology things. Yes. And uh, it might be anything from helping them get an iPad to buy a piece of software to do some training. Uh, but just trying to help them feel like they're supported if they want to take a chance, take a risk, and try something new from a technology standpoint yeah. in the classroom. Uh, so that's... That's one level, and then kind of the next level up, um, as you know, we're working on some whole classes yes. that might be more and delivered in a more innovative way. And the online classes you were talking about, um, just creating online classes, which is great. I think it's a great product where we're um, becoming part of the trend of offering that, so I'm really excited about that. And then there's some talk, too, about um, taking maybe a degree That's right. Online. Yeah, yes. if you think about our journey, a lot of this started, I should also note, that it started a lot with the foundations courses, mm -hmm. and a lot of great work went into standing up online versions of those. So we have the foundations alternatives that, that to face-to-face, -to -face, can, students can do those online, but we have not yet gone all the way to a degree. Mm -hmm. And uh, that might be a hybrid format. I, that's probably the most likely, more than a pure online. Sure. Um, but that, I think, is now underway, those conversations. And so, for, for example, do we want to take one of our Masters of Science degrees and deliver that in some sort of hybrid format. And then we have uh, been thinking about the International MBA, mm -hmm. the one that was in Mexico City for so long. Uh, do we think about having a technology focus there that uh, enables students from Mexico or perhaps Latin America to come to Austin some, but also get some of the content while they're in their home market? Yeah. Um, so th I think this is the year that we'll have more of those conversations. And many of you out there uh, from both the faculty and staff side uh, we'll probably be engaged in those conversations. So I'm excited. I think it, uh, you know, these questions have been begged. What is, mm -hmm. the, what is the Macomb School going to do about uh, the future of instruction? And yes. so it's, it's, you know, we're, we're weighing in and, and going through that process. Yes. Answer the question, we're going to be there. That's right. Future focused. <laughs> in the future, we're going to be there. <laughs> Let's talk about our initiatives uh, focused on women, which is something else I'm excited to talk about. There are very concentrated efforts to focus on women initiatives here at McCombs. So let's talk about those. Sure. Yeah, a couple that are going uh, that are underway. Uh, so one is, uh, I think it's being labeled, branded as Women at McCombs. Mm -hmm. And so under the leadership of... Uh, of Raji Srinivasan, our Associate Dean for Diversity and Inclusion. Um, and then I, Christy Losher is also helping her um, with this. But she's formed a group of faculty and staff, mm -hmm. uh, women, and bringing them together uh, to have conversations around the environment. And uh, you can imagine this leading to informal mentoring, conversations, mm -hmm. information flow, uh, surfacing issues that, that are important uh, that we can all work on. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited about it and, and, and grateful for uh, Raji and Christy, and then for everybody for taking part in that. Yeah, and uh, the Women's Initiative Council, same thing, or that involves students too as well? Yeah, that, that's something that has come out of the Advisory Council for the school uh, right now. So the, the chair for this year is Marcy Zlotnick, uh, who is tremendous mm -hmm. and just a bundle of, of energy and enthusiasm. And uh, Marcy has been working with a committee to help us think about how to get senior business leaders who are women engaged in the school. Mm -hmm. And that might be a seat on the advisor council, it might be a seat on one of our other boards and councils. To your point, uh, we're, they're working as mentors with executive MBA students right mm -hmm. now. Yes. So can we bring them in on a Friday, for example, and have them meet with some executive MBAs to, to help those students see role models who are women and, and business leaders. Um, there's also talk about uh, just how do we think about the pipeline for the future? And uh, how can we make sure that that we stay connected to our alums and that they know we want their help. Yes. And because ultimately, as you mentioned, it comes back to the students. Right. And how can we use some amazing people to help 
our students also propel their careers forward. Yes, awesome. We're doing some great here, great things here at McCombs, and it's so exciting to hear about it from the dean and to know all of the efforts that McCombs and you are putting forth to um, make sure that we are staying future focused and we're addressing the needs of the industry as well as students um, and staff and faculty right now. So it's great to talk to you about these things. It's always great talking to you too. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us today. We will see you next time on the Q&A with Jay.